Alright, in this video we're going to be looking at root solving. Uh, in this case we're actually looking at root solving a polynomial, which means basically where does the line cross the, the uh, x-axis. Uh, so there's various ways that we can go about this. Uh, if in fact it is a polynomial, like the example I've got here is, then we can use the function roots. So if we enter the coefficients of that polynomial, so if I have it in the form a times x squared plus b, times x plus c, then I would supply for it a, b, c, for example. So here, following the example I've got at the top, b1 minus 3 minus 5, and I see I've got two roots to this particular expression, which you expect, it's quadratic, uh, and therefore there's the two of them there. Uh, if we wanted to be able to plot uh, what this expression looks like, um, what we can do is use the symbolic toolbox. Now I haven't talked about this yet, but for now, just remember it's got this function easy plot, and I can enter as a string the uh, mathematical expression to easy plot. I'm going to evaluate that, and it will automatically plot what it thinks is the region of interest for this. So we see that there were two roots. Approximately 1 at minus 1.19, yeah, that looks about right. And another one at just over 4, which looks about right as well. Okay, as we expect, MATLAB has picked both of those up. Uh, if we wanted to actually plot those on there, let's say for example, we could use hold on, which means keep the current plot as it is, and then let me plot over the top of it. So we're going to plot both of those points. Uh, so let's reevaluate our roots as r equals roots. So I can use those variables, and then the x locations, uh, and then what we'll do is we'll plot the first one at 0, and we're going to place a red circle on that, and we're going to plot the second one at 0, and we'll place a blue circle, a black circle on that one. And we'll also plot a dashed black line at 0. So we can see. And here we go. There is our x axis. There are the roots that have been solved for it. So that all appears to work alright. Um, and we can easily visualize that using MATLAB. Alright, let's do it using a numerical technique that doesn't involve uh, some special tricks, knowing that in fact we have a polynomial. It could be a general nonlinear function, for example. So this one we're going to use is we're going to use a function called f0. Now, just like I showed you in the first video, we could go dot f0 if we haven't used this particular function before, and here it is. And it gives us an explanation, some examples, root solving from one point, and so forth to be able to use this. But basically, we're looking for the syntax, which is this guy here. So I'm going to copy that. It's all right. We're going to use that syntax here to solve this problem. So I'm going to define my function. Now this is really important. What I'm going to do is create what's known as an anonymous function. Now these are really easy way in MATLAB to create functions that you don't want to create a whole file for and function declaration and so forth. Just a function that you can use inside your code or in line with your code. So fun equals just a variable name at, now this is the key part, at, then the input variable or input variables, if you have more than one, you could use xyz for example, and then the function. Now we're going to vectorize our function, 3 times x minus 5, remember I don't need dot times there because that's a scalar, I do with a power, and then I'm going to call f0 with my function. Right, so I'm passing that function into F0, which is my root solving function. So it allows F0 to be able to call this one. And then I'm going to give it an initial guess. Now I remember my two roots were somewhere around minus 2 and 4. So let's start at minus 2. That's picked up the first root. So we'll call that one X1. And let's pick up the second root, which was somewhere around 4. Alright, so you see a couple of things here quite important. F0 
needs a starting guess of where you think the route could be. So depending on which route that you guess will depend on where you end up. So that's a little bit of a gotcha, especially if you have more than one route, as we do in this one. So let's take those two routes, x1 and x2, and we'll plot them as stars on our plot. And we'll plot the original figure as well, and we see that we've ended up with the same point from two different routines, which is what we'd expect, probably down to very good accuracy, even if I zoomed in a lot. And you'll see I didn't have enough points when we used easy plot, which is why that's coming across there. But we are working with very small numbers here. But both answers have come out very, very close. So just to summarize again what we've done here, we've used the roots function, which works with polynomials, and we supplied the coefficients of that polynomial to solve for both roots, which is the preferred way of doing it if you have a polynomial. We've plotted it uh, using easy plot with a symbolic toolbox, which is a nice way to be able to just get quick plot without having to write any plotting commands and it gave us the region of interest. We've then gone hold on to allow us to plot on top of easy plots plot and we've plotted those two routes uh, along with a dash line. And then finally we've used an anonymous function which are actually really useful and I highly recommend that you start using these to use a function function, one like f0, and there's several others that you can use, from two different initial points to gather those two final uh, uh, roots that we then plotted on top as well.